It's Halloween time, so you know what that means. Another unnecessary revival of a beloved horror movie or horror movie franchise. We have The Exorcist Believer coming to us from a director, David Gordon Green, who just recently gave us the Halloween trilogy, which was um, controversial to say the least. Now, before I jump into this review, if you love movies and you love movie reviews, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button down below. This way you get plenty more movie related content, plenty more movie reviews, and you're just gonna get a bunch of awesome new stuff. So hit that bell so you don't miss a single one of my new videos and I thank you in advance. Now, wouldn't it be crazy if I told you that The Exorcist Believer was actually better than the original Exorcist film? I'm not gonna say that, but, uh. Can you, can you imagine just living in a world where I did say that? Wow. Wow. All silliness aside, this movie's been getting pretty horrible reviews, so I definitely went in with low expectations. And in The Exorcist Believer, uh, it follows the story of these two young girls who they perform this ritual of sorts in the forest, and then, of course, they get possessed, uh, and their families are trying to help them, and they can't seem to get anything right, and they have no idea what's going on. And, of course, we know that they are being possessed by some sort of demonic spirit, and, of course you have your exorcism movie. Now, after the way he handled the Halloween trilogy, especially with Halloween ends, I wasn't really pumped that David Gordon Green was now taking on The Exorcist and that we're turning this into another trilogy. So, you know, this is not only just a revival of The Exorcist, but we're getting two more movies for some reason. But I will say, after seeing the movie, it is nowhere near as bad as many reviews have made it out to be. But does that mean that it's great? No. This is just a typical run-of-the-mill slightly above average exorcism movie that just happens to have the exorcist title, some nods to the original, some characters from the original movie, and that's about it. Now, I will say, I do think it is pretty well directed. I mean, David Gordon Green definitely has a nice visual flair when it comes to horror. There are some scenes in this movie that I think do work and are genuinely chilling. And I would say, like, the first half or so of the movie is actually really effective. And, you know, there's a great lead performance from Leslie Odom Jr., who plays the father of one of the girls who is possessed. And I think he's fantastic in the movie. And, you know, as he slowly begins to unravel what's going on and come to terms with what's happening, I think that he is phenomenal in the film. And I think he really grounds it in reality and makes it very watchable when he's on screen. And there are some moments that definitely got under my skin a little bit, some visual nods to the original that I thought were actually pretty well done. But other than that, there really isn't much about this movie that's really memorable. That's the main issue I have with this movie is that it's just very forgettable. I mean, the makeup and effects work is pretty solid and yeah, all your exorcism elements are there, but it's just nowhere near as fun, it's nowhere near as original, and it's just nowhere near as frightening as that original film. It doesn't live up to The Exorcist name, not even close. The entire time I was watching this movie, really the only thing I could think to myself was, why? Why are we here? Why are we watching a new Exorcist film? This is so unnecessary, and I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing offensively bad about this movie, like I said. It's just very mediocre, and it just doesn't warrant a revival of The Exorcist name. It just really doesn't. And frankly, I feel like there's only so many things you can do with a exorcism movie. I mean, you're gonna have some characters get possessed, or characters in this case get possessed. You're gonna see them kind of slowly physically degrade. There's gonna be people flying into the walls. There's gonna be at least one of those. <laughs> You're gonna have a demon speak through its victim in a weird, creepy voice with a very dark sense of humor. You're gonna get that. And you're gonna get a big exorcism scene with shit flying around all over the place and a lot of religious speak being said. You're gonna get that too. And there's just only so much you can do with a movie like this. And there's nothing really original here. We've seen it all before and we've seen it done better. And why we're getting two other movies, I don't know. This movie doesn't even set itself up really for a sequel or sequels for that matter. And I just don't think there's enough meat to this story to really warrant two more movies, but we will see. We will see if these two sequels end up being good and we'll see if this movie even makes enough money to warrant those two sequels. <laughs> so I'm really gonna keep this review brief here. In the end, The Exorcist Believer, it's just a very bland, forgettable movie that absolutely is nowhere near as good as the original Exorcist movie. That movie is a classic. It pales in comparison, but I do not think it's anywhere near as bad as most reviews out there have claimed it to be. It's just nothing special. It's nothing remarkable. And it doesn't really make me excited for two more of these. So in the end, I'm going to be giving The Exorcist Believer, I'm going to give this movie two and a half out of five stars. I think it's got good production value, a great lead performance from Leslie Odom Jr., some solid direction from David Gordon Green. But overall, it just didn't really come together for me. It didn't really leave any sort of impact on me. And it just didn't creep me out. 
I didn't really have a good time with this one. It didn't get under my skin like the original film does every single time I watch it. It just, it didn't do what I needed it to do as a horror film. So that is my review of The Exorcist Believer, but let me know what you think of it in the comment section below. Let me know if you loved it, hated it, felt middle of the road on it. I want to know. Leave your comment down below. And if you want to follow me on social media, I'll put my handles at the bottom of the screen as per usual, and they'll be in the description of this video as per usual. And make sure to follow my film podcast, Film on Tap, where every other week I get together with my buddies. We talk about movie news, trailers, we review movies, we go on weird, wild, hilarious tangents. It's a blast. Links to that in the description as well. And until next time, everybody, I'm Tom Chattelbash, YouTube's most reliable movie critic.